This is the video that I've been hesitating to make for over seven months now. And it's because no other tech product has divided my opinion on it as much as the iPhone SE 2020 has. Welcome to Urban Techie, I'm your host Aditya and today we are going to be checking out the iPhone SE 2020 in 2021. Let's go. Owning an iPhone has been a long-standing dream of mine but not for the reasons that you might think. I care more about actual value for money than brand names and Apple has never provided me with good reason to consider an iPhone for the value proposition it offers. However, with the introduction of iOS 13 and the launch of iPhone SE 2020 last year, I finally had what I always wanted. Powerful hardware, customizable software in a reasonably priced iPhone. So, should you pull the trigger and get the iPhone SE 2020 right now? Or should you spend a little bit more for the other iPhone models out there? Or should you do the unthinkable and just walk away from this brand knowing that your money is well spent elsewhere? Let's find out. Alright, let's run down the hardware specifications real quick. The phone sports a 4.7 inch display with 750 by 1334 pixel resolution. I know, odd. The screen is LCD but I have to admit that it is one of the best LCD I've ever seen in a mobile device. Weighing over 148 grams, the design factor is absolutely lightweight and is built quite sturdy as well. To quote Steve Jobs, the man himself, it's something wonderful for your hands. The glass sandwich design feels every bit as premium as every other iPhone out there and it's one of my favorite things about this phone. The same cannot be said about the thick black bezels on top and bottom of the screen which are straight out of 2015. Touch ID makes a welcome comeback on this phone and it's very convenient in today's age of the pandemic. It's quick and accurate in unlocking your phone and you'll be completely satisfied with the haptic feedback that you get from the Touch ID sensor. The main speaker is located at the bottom of the phone with the earpiece acting as a secondary speaker providing dual audio output. The sound levels are amazing and so loud that it is kinda hard to believe it's coming from such a tiny phone. Overall this phone is a joy to hold and use and the one hand form factor is so refreshing from all the other 6.5 inch, 6.7 inch glass lamps that you would find in 2021. The reason the iPhone SE 2020 is relevant in 2021 is due to the A13 Bionic chipset which powers the device. The A13 Bionic chipset was the flagship chipset from Apple released along with the iPhone 11 lineup. Even now, after two years since the release of the A13 Bionic chipset, the phone can handle anything that you throw at it. The lag is close to nil while opening apps and the system animations have no jitters or slowdowns. This is still a very capable chipset in 2021. The RAM in iPhones has always seemed like an afterthought to Apple and the iPhone SE 2020 with its 3GB of RAM is no exception. But the phone still shatters conventions when you see how it performs in day-to-day -day use. The RAM management is leaps and bounds ahead of what Android phones can do at the moment and apps are kept in memory without reloading or closing for long periods of time. One day I found Instagram open on the same page as I had left it the night before even though I had gone to bed and woken up. That's almost 8 hours without reloading an app. Performance is not a concern at all with the iPhone SE 2020. The storage on the phone is non-expandable and starts at 64 GB and goes up to 256 GB. Personally, I think it's criminal that iPhone is still selling 64 GB variants. I myself have the 128 GB variant with me and I find it's enough for most use case scenarios. Alright, let's talk cameras. The cameras on any iPhone make for interesting conversation. The main camera on the iPhone SE 2020 is a 12 megapixel shooter with OIS which takes very capable shots provided that there is ample light. The front facing camera is 7 megapixel and is hidden in a bezel the size of Asia. I did find that the focus range of the front facing camera is a bit too narrow for group shots or even a proper selfie and it is really a pain during zoom calls. The main camera can also shoot up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second which is just astonishing considering the tiny form factor. And here is the bummer. There is no dedicated night mode on the iPhone SE 2020. To compare, this is what makes it like a nerfed iPhone camera. There is no doubt that this phone could have handled night mode smoothly considering the A13 chipset inside, but I think Apple did not want to cannibalize on the sales of the iPhone 11 
by providing the SE with such a complete camera tool set. Don't get me wrong, the photos do not suffer at all when you compare it to the iPhone 11 except for some minor detail. The picture science is the same, the materials, the colors are the same. The only thing that suffers a little bit is texture quality because of the smaller sensor. This is a very capable camera for 2021. The only disadvantage that the iPhone SE users will face during their camera experience is the lack of a dedicated night mode. Considering that Apple used the design parameters of iPhone 8 to build this phone, it comes as no surprise that they didn't increase the battery size. The battery size of the iPhone SE is a little under 2000 mAh. And as you already know, there is no charger included in the box, just the Type-C to Lightning cable. And this cable can juice up the iPhone SE 2020 up to 18 watts. The iPhone SE 2020 also supports wireless charging up to 10 watts with compatible Qi wireless chargers. But the battery life on the SE is disappointing to say the least. Considering today's standards, especially with so many of us stuck inside our homes, binge watching shows, working from home, the battery life of the iPhone SE 2020 just doesn't cut it. Pro tip, I found that changing your charging habits helps a lot in managing battery life on this phone. I got myself a wireless charging pad to place my iPhone on whenever I'm not using it. This meant that I always had enough juice to get me through whenever I needed to use the phone. I also had battery saver turned on like continuously even around 95% and I found that it increases the battery life of the iPhone SE just a little bit more. But if you're always on the move or love binge watching shows on your phone, then be warned this is not an all day device. It's not even a half-day device. You'll need to charge up this phone after about four hours of continuous use. iPhones are famous for running the latest version of iOS at all times and providing software updates even after four years post-launch. The iPhone SE 2020, which was launched with iOS 13 on board, presently runs iOS 14.7 and will most likely support all the latest versions of iOS for the next three years. Using this phone with its app drawer and various widgets, seems a familiar yet unfamiliar experience for me. And this is where Apple shows its skill to take an idea, put a unique spin on it and make it their own. This is largely felt in the design of the widgets, the app drawer, the picture-in-picture -picture mode on the iPhone and almost in every software UI element. There is a catch, however, and that is you will be using your phone on the terms set by the manufacturer, that is Apple. Personalization on the iPhone is still difficult when compared to the simplicity of Android phones. I'll cover this topic a bit more extensively in another video coming soon, so subscribe if you want to see that. Ultimately, some may like iOS, some may not, but if you're getting an iPhone, you should know that customization is difficult and handy features like dual apps running natively on the phone is off the table. But there are also things that iOS does best like the green or yellow dot which pops up every time an app is using your camera or microphone, or the ability to turn off app tracking, which deserves a huge shout out for paving the way for other manufacturers to focus more on the subject of privacy. iOS also works very well within the Apple ecosystem. And if you're looking to get a taste of the convenience that it offers, then the iPhone SE 2020 is the cheapest device in the iPhone lineup. The pricing of the iPhone SE 2020 has fluctuated a lot in India since its launch. Usually iPhones don't experience a price cut unless there is a new series of iPhones launched, but the iPhone SE 2020 has seen a bit more action than that. For context, I imported my iPhone SE 2020 from the US with the help of a friend for about 33,000 INR. Right now, you'll be able to pick up this phone in India off Flipkart for about 33,000 INR for the 64 GB variant and about 37,000 INR for the 128 GB variant. But if you're really serious about buying the iPhone SE 2020, then you should keep an eye out for Flipkart special day sales. During the sale period, Flipkart actually marks a discount of about 2,000 to 3,000 rupees on their iPhones. So you'll be able to pick up the iPhone SE 2020 120 GB variant for about 33,000 or 34,000 INR. If you want to go even cheaper, you'll be able to pick up the 64 GB variant for about 29,000 or 30,000 INR. Finally, who should buy the iPhone SE 2020? The Apple iPhone SE 2020 isn't the best iPhone out there by any means. It is also a phone which comprises almost entirely of things that we wouldn't compromise in 2021. The screen is a bit hard to type on even though the phone has excellent haptic feedback. The screen size is too small for binge watching content on Netflix or Amazon Prime, which is a shame because the speakers on this phone are truly amazing. The short battery life is easily the best excuse to not get this phone. For anyone who doesn't travel much and mostly works from home, this phone is daily drivable, provided that they invest in a good wireless charger and use the downtime of the phone to top up the battery consistently.
All in all, this iPhone is the perfect option for anyone who's attached to the tiny footprint of the iPhones of the past with the added bonus of not compromising on performance. This phone is also a perfect starting point for anyone who's looking to get into the Apple ecosystem on a budget. Although I'm thrilled that Apple made a budget-friendly iPhone for the masses, I am let down by my expectations from a daily drivable phone in 2021. Get the iPhone SE 2020 only if you belong to the niche group of people who want an iPhone, are on a strict budget and don't mind carrying around a charger or a power bank wherever you go. As for me, I'm gonna hold on to this one in addition to my OnePlus daily driver just to see where Apple takes its phones next. If you like this content, click that like button and share this video with your friends. Also subscribe while you're at it. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching till the end. I will see you guys next time.